Bugünkü konumuz babalarla çok ilgili. Özellikle e, ben çok bilirim bu konuyu. O yüzden ben anlatayım istedim. E, ama şaka yapıyorum ben anlatmayacağım. Bugünkü konumuz emzirme. Çocuklarımızı, bebeklerimizi nasıl emziriyoruz? Neyle emziriyoruz? Nelere dikkat ediyoruz? Ne önemli? Ne malzemeler kullandık? Ne yaptık? Ne ettik? Hepsini ben anlatacağım demek isterdim. <gülüyor> Bildiğim kadarıyla anlatabilirim ama e, tabii bilen daha iyi anlatır diye. Bugünkü konuğum e, tahmin ettiniz mi? Evet. I'm going to talk about my breastfeeding adventure and I guess success. Um, this is my firstborn. She is 32 months and she's still nursing. So I guess that means we've succeeded. <laughs> my original aim was probably around six months, even though to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing. Sibel also drinks milk, yes. The second baby also drinks milk. My original aim was to nurse until six months. That was what I knew or thought I had to do but if I wasn't able to nurse until six months I was okay with not doing that then once I started nursing once a baby was born I realized that I wanted to try to nurse even longer and I got really ambitious <laughs> so I guess you can say I succeeded um, but it wasn't e easy and that's why I wanted to talk about it a little bit I feel like I've gone through all the problems that not all the problems but most of the problems that you can possibly go through to my knowledge and from what I've heard from experts, 99% of women can nurse. But sadly, not 99% of women or 100% of women have access to help and nursing is hard. I don't know how it's a natural thing because it really doesn't come naturally to, well, it didn't come naturally to me, that's for sure. You need help. If you're lucky enough to be able to do it, that's great. But if you're not and having trouble, you need to get help or else your milk will dry up or the baby won't latch properly or you'll be so miserable that you won't want to nurse. There, there's so many problems that can happen and you need to have a really good nursing uh, nurse to help you or um, lactation consultant. And not every lactation consultant is good either. And not every nurse and not every uh, doctor knows very much about nursing. Actually, most doctors and OBGYNs don't know a lot and they'll give you advice that's wrong. So yeah, get help if you're having a problem. While I was nursing, I encountered a lot of comments from everybody. Everybody has an opinion about nursing. First, that I wasn't doing it right. That I was nursing with a Mel, I was nursing a Mel too much. Um, and then everybody has an opinion and the most important thing is don't listen to anybody listen to yourself the only time you need to listen to somebody is if you're really confused and you don't know what to do and you ask their advice for Amel she was the kind of kid who would nurse for 40 minutes switch boobs maybe take a 10 minute break and just keep going all day at one point I was writing down I was recording how often she nursed and when because first time mom <laughs> and she had she was nursing 26 times a day Sibel is completely different. Sibel would nurse for 15 minutes and be done for three hours. And I was thinking, what's the matter with her? But that's just the way she is. Every baby is different. And so every mom is gonna give you advice based on their experiences. Don't listen to anybody unless you really want their opinion. Huh, another thing, I, with Amel, I got my period at about seven months postpartum. With Sibel, it was four months. And I remember when I got it with Amel, Everybody told me, oh, your nursing journey's finished. You're going to dry up. You're not going to be able to milk, make any more milk. And the truth is, for the first two days before I got my period, she bit me more than she'd ever bitten me before. And I didn't know that I had less milk. I just thought, because she had teeth, I just thought she was teething some more. And then, ha, huh, bam, there's my period. And then I realized that, yeah, I was making less milk. And this is what happens when you start getting your period, usually you do make less milk for a little while. But then when your period finishes, you go back to normal. So after your period finishes, you go back to making the same amount of milk. So don't give up when you get your period. When my period started with Sibel, the exact same thing happened and I didn't put it together that I was making less milk, but it came, she bit me, and 
it's gone now and she's back to normal. She's happy and I'm making the same amount of milk. So don't let your period push you down. You'll be able to make more milk. One thing that's important to know is nursing does not spoil your child. Nursing is healthy, nursing is natural, and it's what they need. It's, I mean, if you can't nurse, that's okay too. But if you are nursing, don't let anybody tell you that you're spoiling your child by giving them the breast every time they cry. This is what they need. This is a way to soothe them. Uh, and it's healthy. It's okay for them. So we're going to start with uh, Amel's birth. Amel was born um, by C-section after about 10 hours of labor. Uh, a lot of people think that if you have a C-section, your milk won't come quickly. Or if you've had a C-section after labor, you have better chances of milk coming quickly. I'm not sure. Personally, I don't think it makes a difference. I've heard a lot of women who have scheduled C-sections and the milk still comes at the same time. My milk came in at four days. After, mm, after you have a baby, you have colostrum. Your body starts making it before the baby is born. And a lot of women can actually get the colostrum out of their breasts before the baby's born. I tried. I had no idea what I was doing before and I was born, so nothing came out. Um, after she was born, I guess I was making colostrum because you can't really see it. It's so little, but it's enough for the babies. Um, and I, you know, you never really know for sure <laughs> what's happening. It's really nerve-wracking. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about the hospital. At the hospital, after having a baby, I just was completely overwhelmed, totally sleep deprived because this baby did not want to sleep from day one, and she still doesn't. Uh, and so the nurses come, okay. um, the nurses come in and they tell you you have to feed the baby every three, Baba? two to three hours. Baba? Baba's over there. Yeah, you, yeah. Um, every two to three hours and mm -hmm, after a while you start to dread it because you know that eventually they're going to make you do it on your own. Um, they teach you how to hold the baby. At, at least at our hospital, they did. The nurses were pretty good. They teach you how to. Mm -hmm. They teach you how to. Okay. Yeah, it was you I was holding. They show you how to hold her, and then they tell you to do it yourself, and you just can't do it. And they show you how to latch her and get it right, and then they leave, and they say, "Okay, you're gonna have to do it on your own next time," and it just doesn't work. And then you call them, and then they help you, and then the baby's able to nurse, and it goes on like that. Um, in the hospital, she was, it seemed like she was nursing fine. I had no idea that she had a really bad latch. By the time we got home, I realized that, yeah, she had a terrible latch. I was in pain. I couldn't figure out how to hold her properly. It was a nightmare. Toe curling pain nursing her. Um, she and her sister both had very, very lazy, shallow latches, which means where you're supposed to get the whole nipple in. They just got the tiniest little tip and they just barely put in their mouth. I had to learn how to get them to latch properly. I had a nursing, a lactation consultant come in and help me out. She recommended because Amel uh, wasn't nursing properly, her latch wasn't very good, that instead of trying a bottle, because you don't want nipple confusion at the beginning, nipple confusion is when they start to prefer the bottle over the breast because the milk comes out quicker they don't have to work so hard she recommended that we use a spoon to feed her or this it's a spoon bottle i guess you fill it with milk and then you just squeeze here and it comes out drop by drop it was very expensive and we never used it <laughs> so if anybody wants one we've got an extra one um it's it's an interesting device, it's fun to play with, but yeah, we never used it. After a little while, we figured it out. Yeah, he played with it. Um, unfortunately, after about, hmm, after about 15 days postpartum, uh, I had so much damage to my left nipple that I was trying to never nurse from it. I was in pain, it was bleeding, it was half gone, and it was awful. So. But I knew I had to nurse from it or else that side might dry up. In fact, it almost did. When I Later on, when I would pump milk from both breasts, I would have this much from my right and this much from my left. And it's very frustrating. So anyway, I knew that I had to somehow find a way to nurse from that side. Can you get that? So I used nipple shields, which helped 
my nipple heal, number one, and helped her to get a deeper latch. And it helped my nipples heal. I used the nipple shields for about a little bit more than a month. And on just on my left boob, every time I would nurse her, I would nurse her a little bit and then I would take her off and I would try to take off the nipple shield and then try to relatch her without the nipple shield to see if she had improved. She hadn't really, it took a really long time. And then one day it was just like, bam, I'd nursed without it. And she did it fine and there was no pain. And I thought, oh, finally, we're through, it's okay. So we didn't need them after that. Another thing that was, um, that I found really useful at the very beginning was uh, what they're called nipple shells. I actually said out loud that they need to invent something that makes it so that your clothes don't rub against your breasts because your nipples are so sensitive. And lo and behold, they'd already created something. Um, Avent makes them. And a friend of mine had act was actually selling a set that she never used. And so I borrowed those. They're great. They're little cuffs that fit into your bra. And you can either use them just to get air to your nipples without your clothes rubbing. And you, they also have like a little collecting cup. And you can collect the milk that leaks out. Because for the first, I don't know how long, you just leaked everywhere. I mean... <laughs> The cat was wandering around licking milk off the floor. It was disgusting. Uh, ironically, with the second baby, I hardly leaked at all, and I didn't eat anything like that. I also used nursing pads the first, with the first baby because I thought I felt like I was leaking a lot, and I was. Second baby, I didn't use them once. I didn't leak at all. One technique that I learned was if you feel like you're about to leak, you can actually press on your breast, and it will stop the leaking. So back to the, uh, the left boob and the right boob yeah. problem that I had. Um, because I was nervous about nursing from the left boob, I nursed a lot from my right boob and I ended up giving myself an oversupply on my right side to the point where it was impossible to empty it enough and I ended up with a clogged duct, which surprisingly didn't turn into mastitis but Papa turn into an abscess. Sure. Later we can, yeah. The abscess swelled up so much so that I couldn't even put my arm down. I tried every technique that I'd read. There's a million different things that you can do when you have a clogged duct. Usually they work, but when it gets to the point of an abscess, you have to go to a surgeon, unfortunately, and have it drained. It's not nice, but it never came back. A little side note, after I uh, recovered from that, I went online. There's a million Facebook groups that have so much information. Uh, I think that, and Bubba will put a link to some of them here, maybe. Um, I was told that the best thing you can do, in addition to emptying your breast completely, drinking lots of water, uh, to avoid having blocked ducts, is to take soya lichen. Bug. Uh -huh. Soya lechen you can buy in pharmacies, at least in North America, and it, I don't know the total details of what it does, but it basically, it makes your milk so smooth that it doesn't get stuck in your milk ducts when it's clogged up. The best part about soya lechen, lechen I guess it's pronounced, is it's one of the main ingredients in chocolate. So since I had the abscess, I... It's over there, Mom. It's over there. Since I had the abscess, I started eating a lot of chocolate. Um, if you ask anybody who knows me, I eat a lot. I mean, it's like a vitamin to me. Do you need to go to the bathroom? Mommy, I'm sad too. Okay. So I eat a lot of chocolate, and I haven't had any serious problems about blocked ducts since then. I have had times when I was engorged, and I couldn't open it. There's a lot of different things you can do, and uh, you can go online. We don't have to go into all those. It's a totally different story. So we can talk about... I went back to work at about five and a half months with a mal... Ow! Somebody's teething. And I went back to work at three months with Sibel. At about uh huh, at about four months with ML, I started trying to build my milk stash at home because I didn't know how it would go. I didn't know what was going to happen. I had no idea. Go under the table and come over. You can't get through there. Under the table. 
So I had my pump and I had no idea what to do with my pump either. I had an Ameda pump, which was secondhand from our cousin. And I bought the uh, pump pieces that go with it. I made a mistake and I bought um, like a cheaper copy of the pieces. And unfortunately, they don't fit exactly right. And I, it was a nightmare. I was having so many trouble, problems pumping and the pieces were falling off and I couldn't have a good suction. And so I wrote a really nasty letter to the Ameda company because I didn't realize that I'd bought the cheaper um, copy pieces. And I said, what's the matter with your pump? I'm losing my mind. And they were so amazing. They wrote to me and they said, we want to send somebody over. And they sent somebody over to the house, a lactation consultant who worked in the company. And she checked everything and she looked at how everything fit me. And then she realized, of course, that I had the wrong pieces. And she measured my nipples to figure out which flange size was right, because it's very important that you have the right size. If you don't have the right size, there's gonna be rubbing, it's gonna pinch, it's, it's gonna be a nightmare. So it's very important to get the right size flanges. She saved me, really, I can credit her. And she was so good, she would hold the baby for me while I was trying things, like it was just really helpful. So I have to say props to that company. Um, I'm still using the same pump now. Uh, so yeah, I started trying to build my supply, um, okay, by, uh, pumping. I was trying to pump, I think, once a day, no, twice a day, because we were slowly trying to introduce the bottle to Amel as well. So I was pumping, um, for a bottle for her, and then also trying to build a stash at home. And it's really hard to find time to pump when you've got a hungry baby who also wants to nurse at the same time. So while... They were giving her the bottle, my husband or family members who were visiting, I was pumping. And to get that additional bottle for the future stash, I was doing it in the middle of the night. And it's awful trying to not wake up your baby who never sleeps anyway. What are you doing? Come on up, come on up. Um, trying not to wake up the baby and pumping and being stressed and being exhausted. Those are all a combination for not making milk. You need to be t have energy, you need to be happy and relaxed. So I was doing that about 3 a.m. and pumping for her. Later, I found out about the haka. Okay. Hey, Amel, do you know where mommy's haka is? Can you get it for me? Mommy's gonna get it. Okay, go on. So with Sibel, I found out, while I was pregnant with Sibel, I found out somebody was selling their haka. Um, and I'd heard about it in my uh, breastfeeding groups, but I didn't really know how effective it could be. This is a haka. It's so... No, that's a, something else. It's so simple, and it's great. I haka. I've heard some women don't have success with it, but I've... In general, most women do. It's pretty amazing. Literally, you, Amel, you fold this down, suction it like this, stick your boob here, close it, and it usually stays suctioned on. And for if I'm nursing one of the babies first thing in the morning, I can stick it to the other boob and it'll catch the letdown because usually you'll have a second a letdown in the other boob at the same time. So I can collect. Fair amount of milk. I do have more milk than most women in one side. Um, so I'll sometimes empty it and refill it two or three times in the morning. But you can also get it going. Could you stop that? <laughs> By putting it on and squeezing it a couple of times. It stimulates like a suction, suction action. And you can also get milk that way. I think if I were to do it over again, if I were to do it over again, um, I would probably buy two. They're not that expensive. And I could use it as a pump at home. Now I have my pump at school. I don't even bring the pump home. I just use my haka at home. If I need milk uh -huh, on the weekend or something, I'll literally walk around while I'm doing dishes. I've used it in the shower. It's great for collecting milk randomly. Of course, yes, you can't really <laughs> walk around with guests there at home, but anyway. It's great for collecting milk. So, haka is totally worth it. Okay, it's yours. Pumping at work. 
First off, I have to say, I hate pumping. I don't know any woman who loves pumping, but at the same time, I love my pump. It's given me enough milk for my babies, and I've been able to donate my milk to other babies as well. I pump three times a day because I figure that's the closest I can say to what I would pump when I'm not at, when I'm at home. Not pump, sorry, nurse. Although, if you look at how many times I've nursed the baby today, it's probably about 20 times. I get to work at 8 o'clock, and I try to pump at 9, 9.30. Then I pump at lunchtime, and then I pump again around 2, 2.30ish. So I pump three times a day. I aim for pumping for 30 minutes. Some women would pump less. I When I pump for 30 minutes, I can get two letdowns, which means the milk will come and then slow down again, and then I can get more milk a second time. Uh, that works for me. Um, yeah, that that's my system. There's a million different ways that you can pump to get milk if you're having problems. There's power pumping, which means pumping for 10 minutes and then stopping for 10 minutes, pumping for 15 minutes. There's all kinds of different ways to try to get milk if you're having problems when you're pumping. Uh, at first, I didn't think nursing clothing was that important. And I know a lot of women who really couldn't care less about nursing, nursing clothing. They do uh, the two tank top thing where they have one tank top on top and then they can lift one up and their body's still covered with another tank top underneath. I get really hot. I don't like layering. Um, even though I'm layering right now, it's just because my house is really cold. I swear by my nursing clothes. I was really lucky that I got a couple of tops from a friend of mine. Uh, this is a nursing top. It just boob pops right out. I also <laughs> I also got these great um, undershirts from an under like underwear store here that I can just pull the bo boob right out, but it kind of exposes the whole boob. So they're not the best in public. Um, and nursing bras are worth it. Invest in them especially padded ones. I have a couple of nursing bras that aren't padded and I don't wear them anymore. It's, it's not worth it. We don't need to see all of that. Um, in addition, while I was pregnant, of course, everything grows and nothing fits right anymore. So I bought a couple of nursing bras. Do you need to go to the bathroom, Mel? I bought a couple of nursing bras and they definitely didn't fit around so I got these they're bra extenders you can buy them in uh, underwear sh stores normally um, and they've saved me this one obviously it doesn't fit right yes ML it doesn't fit right but you can still adjust it and it works you can see it's been kind of stretched out of shape because I use it so much um, so yeah invest in a few good nursing bras. Basically, I'm down to three nursing bras that I use all the time. And I pretty much wear the same shirts over and over again. Um, and some of them are getting pretty threadbare. Nursing also doesn't just mean that the mom is involved. Dads can get involved too. Dads can be involved in breastfeeding in different ways. Because I didn't pump early on, we weren't able to give a bottle early on either, so it was 100% me. But dads can help by being there. They can bring you water. The best thing and the most important thing while you're nursing is that bottle of water. Every time I nurse or pump, I'll drink a whole liter of water right away. So if they can bring you food, if they can help you, if they can help you hold the baby, little things like that, dads can be totally involved in the breastfeeding journey. Later on, of course, if you're pumping, dads can be involved with that. They can be um, bottle feeding the baby and they get the chance to bond with them so it's not just moms ah, if you have any questions you're welcome to send messages to and Bubba um, and he can send them on to me and uh, I can we can help connect you with somebody who can help or I can help you too and please like this video share this video and write comments and uh, we hope that we can help more women feel comfortable nursing and uh, good luck bye Okay. <laughs> <laughs>